Hi everyone, it's Tomoya. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit more about the bow and the bow strokes. Um, kind of comparing, let's say you are a classical cellist, which if you are a cellist, I'm assuming maybe you've gone that route sometime in your cello life. Um, the difference between what teachers tell you about the classical genre versus what people or what I tend to do more in the jazz genre or the rock or the pop or a little bit, you know, it's a little bit on the different spectrum. Um, of course, like I always say, there is no right or wrong. There is no, you know, this is better, this is worse, this is how it is, so I cannot do the other way. Use everything. Use everything to your advantage. Um, when you play jazz, if you want to play beautifully, you, you know, definitely use classical elements to it. Um, when you play classical and if you play, um, you know, like a very rhythmic piece that has ideas of, let's say, rock or funk, why not use those techniques, you know? So kind of just developing and broadening your horizons. Okay, um, excuse me for the underhand bow hold. I kind of like it these days. So let's say in general, um, in classical music, teachers will tell you many things but let's say you're playing in orchestra and you're playing these old classical western music by western composers um, typically there is a really beautiful sense of the beginning of the note the middle of the note and the end of, of the note Let's say you're playing something in the classical genre, like let's say Mozart, you know. Right, there is that beginning of the note. A little bit, you know, it's not too much. It's not that much. It's just a, a nudge in the beginning. And then there's the middle that kind of disappears to the end. You know, I've heard that because the bows were different, um, it was much easier to kind of play those kind of like pong with a very nice start of a note. So, you know. Right, so it has that beauty and the ups and the downs. A lot of times the phrase will go, you know. It goes into the long phrases, okay? So that's very, very simple, simplified. Um, there's so many more in different genres of classical music, but we'll just kind of skip that for now. In jazz, in general, I think it has a little bit more of a compact feeling, a little bit on the uh, of less bow, a little bit more of the tightness of the sound. Um, <laughs> of thinking I don't know classical music is more like water and wind and kind of going that way jazz or this type of sound is a little bit like very involved inside the energy is kind of like mixing inside and it's like rawr, kind of sound um, and it doesn't really release too much you know it doesn't go like <laughs> but that gets a little bit more on the classical side, which is fine for certain people if you like the idea. But I feel like if you're going for like the saxophone sound, the trumpet sound, you know, like the old jazz style, it's a little bit more like You know, and then you could see, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm coughing, um, that there is articulation, right? And then there are different kinds of articulation. I think you'll see that if you see some jazz books, they'll kind of explain it as like a da sound or a pa sound or a po sound or, you know, whatever sound that, that works for your mouth, kind of like a beatboxing sound, you know, so. So I tend to use a little bit more on the, 
slower bow side, almost to the point where it's that's exaggerated, to the point where it kind of gets too crushed. But I think that's the idea. Not that I'm not thinking about the end of the note or the beginning of the note, I definitely am. You know, I am thinking about up and down and up and down, but a little bit more in the compact side. You know how I don't I don't want to generalize too much, but you know if you listen to classical music, especially orchestra music, you put your volume up because it starts very soft, and all of a sudden it gets so dynamic and it gets so loud, and you have to turn your volume down, and then you have to you know balance your headphones or your speaker because it's very dynamic up and down, and it's very long phrase like you know like thirty minutes in it finally goes to the climax kind of thing. Jazz is a little bit more flat. Of course, it's not completely flat, but it's a little bit more of you have your ups and downs, but kind of within this compact area. I don't think people will play, you know. For me, it gets a little too wavy and a little bit more like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's kind of seasickness. So I kind of like to keep it within a framework. Uh, let's say this is... Of course, in jazz, there are different tempo, right? So if you're going for... You're going for that type. But let's say it's a ballad, then it changes the sound. So maybe you can utilize a little bit more of that beautiful bow control that you learned in classical music. Of course, I won't talk go into so much detail about bow control because there's so much, and you know, classical musicians they study decades to learn about bow control and how much in you know the depth of the sound, the you know, the speed of the sound, the pressure of the bow plus phrasing and there's so many things that you can kind of utilize um, but there are things that definitely relate to of course it's all music you can definitely relate to how you may play especially the beautiful sound in jazz so i'll leave that as it is if you want to learn more about it let me know and maybe I will do something um, to get a little bit more in depth, which is a little bit complicated, but if you want, please let me know. So thank you so much for today. I hope you can kind of see the bow a little bit with the sideways uh, video and maybe see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.